A woman traveling to Denver finds out that her flight has been canceled due to a storm on the way. The woman's name is Alex, she's a pretty journalist that has to get to the place as soon as possible. Her wedding is the following day and she needs to arrive in Denver no matter what. A man named Ben is in the same situation. He's a neurosurgeon that has surgery scheduled for the following day and it's urgent. If he doesn't arrive in Denver, his patient, a little boy, is going to pass away. There are no flights to Denver and they are both stuck. Alex is very clever and stubborn. When she wants something, she finds a way of getting it. She overhears Ben talking to the attendant at the airport and has an idea. She charters a small plane to fly them to Denver, and Ben can come with her if he pays half the price. He's desperate enough to agree. The pilot is an old man who used to fly for the US Air Force during the Vietnam War. He has a dog that accompanies him on his trips and an old plane. When they board the plane, Ben questions the pilot about the storm, but he promises that they are going to be ahead of it. It's good enough for Alex and Ben follows her lead. The beginning of the flight is alright. Ben and Alex introduce themselves and talk. Alex tells him she's a journalist and she has just finished a job in New York. She's in a hurry because of her wedding and she promised her fiancé, Mark, that she is going to be there. Ben tells her he's a surgeon and he was in the city for a medical conference. Alex notices he's British and he explains that he married an American, but he's originally from London. As they pass through the stunning snowy mountains, there's turbulence that makes Ben nervous. The sky is gray and the storm is right there to greet them. As they advance, the storm gets worse and the plane shakes. To make things worse, the pilot can't talk to the air traffic control. He starts stuttering and Ben quickly notices something is wrong. When he approaches the pilot, he realizes he's having a stroke. Ben tries everything in his power to help the man while Alex tries using the codes she heard to talk to the air traffic control. With the storm and without a pilot, they lose control of the plane and hit a mountain. Part of the plane falls off and Alex quickly tells Ben to put on his seatbelt and brace for the fall. It happens in a matter of minutes. Hours later, Ben wakes in the destroyed plane feeling a lot of pain. He has some wounds from the crash but nothing mortal. Alex isn't as lucky. She's out cold, her face is bruised and bleeding and her leg hurt. Ben moves around and finds out the pilot passed away, but the dog is alive. It's dark and it's freezing. He can hear the wind howling outside the plane. Being a rational man, his first plan of action is to take care of Alex. He wipes her wounds and improvises a brace for her leg. He lights a fire using the plane's fuel and a lighter he found on the pilot. He checks his phone and there's no service. He tries not to fall into desperation and hopes that rescue is coming for them. The next morning, Ben wakes to a sudden quietness. The storm is over and the sun shines brightly in the sky. He leaves the plane to check where they are and what he sees makes his blood chill. They are at the top of a mountain, surrounded by snow and precipices. He's hit hard by hopelessness and starts crying. He has no idea how they are going to make it out of there, especially Alex with her leg hurt. He goes back to the plane and tries waking Alex up. It's pointless. He takes the pilot's clothes off of him and puts them on her to keep her warm. Then, he buries the pilot and sends a small prayer for him. It's only hours later that Alex finally awakes. She's frightened and can't recognize Ben at first. He calms her down until the shock has passed and then she finally remembers what happened to them. Ben gives her some medicine and informs her that they had been there for 36 hours already. He hopes that they are going to be rescued at some point, but Alex doesn't share his hope. She's worried about Mark, mainly because she didn't tell him that she was going to charter a plane to get to Denver. He has no idea where she is, only that she disappeared at the airport. There's nothing for them to do but wait. The following day, Alex can't stay inside the plane any longer. She starts getting anxious about being stuck there with no way to know if someone is coming to rescue them. Ben is outside when he sees a plane flying right above them. They quickly try to send a flare to catch the plane's attention but it's too high to see them there and they can't keep wasting flares. Alex wants to help Ben so they can leave as soon as possible, but he refuses because of her leg. If she hurts herself even worse, it's going to give him a headache. What he will soon realize about Alex is that she isn't the type of person that stands idle. Her mind works miles a minute to try and find a solution for their problem. Later on, they have to burn her pictures and wedding invitations to keep their fire going. Ben feels bad for her and says he's sorry she missed her wedding. Alex admits that she didn't tell Mark her idea about the plane. She wanted to surprise him and it blew up on her face. If she had told him, he would have warned the airport and they could be saved. She asks hopefully if Ben talked to someone and he replies that he didn't. He doesn't have anyone worried about him. Another day goes by and Alex is getting more antsy. It's been three days and there's no sign of anyone coming for them. To make things worse, their food is almost over too. She wants to go outside to try and find a road or something, but Ben is strongly against her idea. She pesters him until he decides to climb the peak close to them to see if he can find anything. Alex hands him her camera so he can use the zoom and before he leaves, she tells him that it's okay if he doesn't come back. Ben would never leave her there. His purpose in life is to save lives, not lose them. He refuses to let anything happen to her. It's a dangerous climb, full of slopes, but Ben manages to get there safely. What he sees makes him desperate. There's nothing but mountains and a single bird flying in the sky. Meanwhile, Alex is bored. She starts going through Ben's things to see if she finds anything that helps her uncover the mystery that is Ben. She finds a recorder and presses to hear what he recorded. 
A woman is speaking and telling Ben that she was happy for the time they had together. Alex figures out the woman is Ben's wife, and she thinks that they divorced for some reason. The dog suddenly starts barking and Alex hears scratching outside the plane. She wonders if it's Ben, but she soon realizes it isn't. It's a cougar and with the dog's barks, it knows there's food inside the plane. Alex tries to make the dog quiet but his instincts don't let him. He runs out of the plane to attack the cougar and Alex hears his whimpers. Soon, the cougar enters the plane and she has to think fast. Picking up the flare gun, she shoots the animal and saves her life. Back to Ben, he's going down the mountain and almost falls off. He hears the sound of the flare gun and hurriedly returns to the plane. When he arrives there, he sees blood on the floor and thinks something bad happened while he was away. To his great relief, Alex is alright, but the poor dog isn't. She explains what happened while Ben stitches the dog. The good side to the cougar's attack is that they have enough food now to rest them for two weeks. At night, Ben grills the meat and Alex pesters him with questions about his personal life. She finds that his wife's name is Sarah and he doesn't have any kids. She subtly says that she wishes she can meet Sarah, but Ben is silent. Seeing that he's not going to open up, Alex decides to talk about their next plan of action. She wants to leave the plane and go down the mountain. Ben wants to wait for help. They start arguing their points until Ben is fed up and calls her selfish. He accuses her of putting him in that situation and that she only complains about her wedding when he had a patient who needed him to stay alive. Alex doesn't know what to say because she feels guilty too. She feels like an idiot for not telling her fiancé what she was planning to do. She feels guilty for putting Ben in that situation and knowing that she's useless because of her leg. Her instinct is telling her that they need to move on. If they stay there for too long, they won't have any food left. For that reason, the following morning she decides to take the dog and leave Ben behind with only a note saying that she's going to send rescue to him. When Ben wakes up and notices that neither Alex nor the dog is there, he's mad. He can't believe she would be so stupid as to go down with her bad leg. Not to mention the blistering cold and high slopes. At first, he's so angry that he tells himself that he doesn't care anymore. He puts an sauce sign on the floor and hopes for a plane to see it. A plane passes through again, but it's too far to see his sign. Resigned, Ben goes after Alex. Alex is having a lot of difficulty walking through the high snow with her leg. She walks through sheer will and determination. She's walking so slowly, though, that Ben soon catches up to her. By the time he arrives, all his anger has left his body and he's only relieved that she's alive. He hugs her and says that he's glad she's fine. Walking through the snow is very hard for them. They try talking to pass the time, but it's so tiring that soon they stop. Hours later, they finally reach the tree line and the dog finds a cave for them to stay in. Ben lights a fire and examines Alex's leg. It's healing well. Alex is awkward standing with her underwear so close to him and jokes that he isn't truly a doctor, he's only trying to get into her pants. Ben chuckles and replies that her pants aren't so interesting. Alex notices that Ben doesn't have his gloves and his hands are freezing. She puts his hands inside her coat to warm him up and he finds it cute. She's a very interesting woman. Brash and reckless, but caring and worried. He tells her he's sorry that he almost left her to go on alone, and she brushes him off. She can't fault him for being hopeful and he replies that they should stick together from then on. Alex falls asleep while Ben keeps watch. She starts having a nightmare and talking in her sleep, so he wakes her up. She explains that she didn't tell Mark that she loved him one last time. She regrets letting her pride overrule her. Now she has no idea if she's ever going to see him again. Ben notices she's freezing and lies down next to her to share warmth. When he wakes up the following morning, they are sleeping really close to each other. Ben watches her for a moment, finding her very pretty. She has light blonde hair and her eyes are the color of the ocean. After Alex wakes up, she goes to take a look around with her camera to see if she can find anything. This time, she does. There's a flash of light that gives them hope. It's far from where they are, but Ben thinks it's worth it to check it out. They continue walking and Alex tries to find out more about Ben's relationship. She doesn't know why she's so invested, maybe it's her journalistic personality that wants to uncover mysteries. She asks him how long he has been married and he immediately gets defensive. She explains that he's always wearing a wedding ring but he never talks about his wife. She isn't even married and she always mentions Mark. It's strange for her. Ben pretends he didn't hear her and stays quiet. They walk for hours and it's getting harder and harder to go on. They reach a dead end and Alex starts venting her frustrations. She's very tired, hungry, and cold. She's so desperate that she thinks about jumping the cliff to fall into the cold lake. But Ben tells her she's being reckless. They argue again because Alex is tired of pretending she's fine. She isn't. She's scared that they are not going to find anything and pass away there. She's annoyed by Ben's poker face and how he can't admit to his feelings. She tearfully asks if he thinks they are going to make it and he denies it. He thinks they are going to pass away there, but they still have a choice. They can decide if they want to continue being careful and probably have a good chance of making it, or be led by their emotions being reckless. He already knows which he's going to choose. He turns his back on her and continues walking. Alex has no option but to follow him. Sometime later, she starts crying and apologizes for the way she was behaving. He understands her frustration better than anyone at the moment. He comforts her and says that they were just tired. 
When they finally stop to rest for the night, Alex asks if Ben's phone has any service. It doesn't. She wonders what he was listening to at the airport and asks him to play it for her. He can't say no to her. They sit close to each other and listen to the sad classical song playing. Ben gives her a candy and they lie down to sleep. They continue their journey through the mountains and snow. Ben sees a beautiful view and asks Alex to take a picture of him. He wants to record that moment in case they don't make it and someone finds them. It's going to be his last picture and he wants it to be happy. Alex starts telling him a story of when she was working with the gorillas a long time back, and a girl that she befriended there. The girl had a crush on a boy and Alex gave her a lipstick. There was an explosion and the girl was hit. She was badly hurt. Alex was at her side and before she passed away, she took a picture of her. She refuses to do the same to Ben. They have to keep the hope that they are going to make it, otherwise, there's no point. Their relationship improves dramatically as they spend more time together. Their journey is tough, but they try to have fun whenever they can and talk. Alex asks to rest for a bit and sits down on a fallen tree. She mentions to Ben that she isn't feeling the cold as before, and he explains that her body got used to it. Alex notices that the dog isn't near them and asks Ben to go after him. Ben rolls his eyes but does as she asks because he knows she won't stop talking if he doesn't. While he's looking for the dog, he notices that the dog found something. When he approaches, he almost cries in emotion to see a log cabin in the middle of the woods. Meanwhile, Alex starts hearing weird sounds of something cracking. She cleans the snow from the floor and her heart almost stops when she realizes she's on a frozen river. She yells Ben's name but it's too late. She falls down the crack into the freezing cold water. Luckily for her, Ben wasn't far away and hears her yelling. He runs after her and sees the crack in the ice. He takes her away from the water, and she's limp from the cold. If he doesn't hurry, she's going to pass away from hypothermia. Ben grabs her and runs to the cabin. There he makes a fire and puts Alex on the bed. The cabin is furnished but it's obvious there hasn't been anyone there in ages. Ben finds some cans of soup and an antidote for snake poison. Alex doesn't wake for a long time so he decides to create a concoction using the antidote to make her organism work again. He has no idea if it's going to work but he needs to do something. After he injects her with the medicine, he waits with the dog. Ben starts playing the piano to see if the sound wakes her, and eventually, it does, much to his relief. He doesn't think he can go on without her by his side. Despite being nosy and pestering her, Ben knows that without Alex, he would have passed away by now. She's fearless and bold, and because of that they left the top of the mountain and found a cabin. He doesn't want anything to happen to her. When she wakes, Alex realizes she's lying on a soft surface and thinks they were rescued. Ben tells her the bad news and that he's happy she's alive. She's dizzy and very weak. They are both malnourished due to a lack of food and their body using too much energy to keep them warm. Ben heats the soup and gives it all to her. He doesn't even think about sparing something for himself. He knows Alex needs it. He hands feeds her with a lot of care, and Alex has never felt so loved before. She tries to convince him to eat something, but he refuses. After she eats, they discuss their next plan now that they found the cabin. Again, Ben is partial to waiting until the weather is better. What he doesn't tell Alex is that if she continues, she's not going to make it. She's too weak for that. Alex is afraid they aren't going to have enough food but Ben promises to figure it out. The next day, Ben is away trying to hunt with the dog and Alex decides to snoop his things again. The dog finds a rabbit and Ben runs after him to see if he caught it, leaving Alex alone. He decides to come back earlier than she thought because he enters the house just as she's listening to his wife's voice message. He gets pissed off that she's messing with things she had no right to. Alex tries to explain that they might pass away and she doesn't even know him. Seeing her desperation and sadness, Ben says he hasn't heard that audio in three years. Then, he leaves to go outside and cool his head. When he comes back, he tells her to play the audio again. They listen as Sarah tells Ben that it isn't his fault and he shouldn't blame himself for the way things are going to end. Ben tells Alex that his marriage didn't end the way she probably imagined. Sarah passed away from a brain tumor and she was Ben's patient. He couldn't save her. His guilt is one of the reasons why he can't let anything happen to Alex. He sees her as a way to redeem himself. If he keeps her alive, it's one life he managed to save. Alex feels sorry for him and hugs him. Then, she kisses him on the mouth on a whim. At first, they are scared and confused, but soon they are kissing again. Alex doesn't think about Mark or her wedding. The only reality she has at the moment is Ben and his body in front of her. They have no idea what is going to happen the next day if they are ever going to leave those woods and mountains behind. She wants to feel more than fear, or pain. She wants to get lost in Ben. They get intimate and it's the best they felt in weeks. They remember the moments in their journey for survival, and it only makes everything more special. It's visceral and wild. There's no before and after that, only the present. The next day, Alex takes a picture of Ben sleeping. When he wakes up, she tells him that she thinks they must be close to some civilization. She wants Ben to go without her and she's going to stay in the cabin waiting for him. Ben is reluctant, knowing that Alex is in a fragile state. If she doesn't eat or if it's too cold, something could go wrong and she would be alone. Still, she insists and there's no way for him to say no. 
The following day, he leaves her behind with everything they possess. He walks a couple of meters before remembering their talks and moments together. He can't stop thinking that something is going to happen to her. Turning around, he goes back to the cabin to take her with him. He promises he's going to get her home, no matter what. He couldn't save Sarah or his patient, but he was going to save her. Their journey is even harder because they are weak and malnourished. Alex can barely stand. When they stop to rest for a bit, they both fall asleep. The dog appears and starts barking, pushing Ben to wake him up. Ben goes down rolling and finally wakes only to see that the dog saved them again. Not too far from where they were, there is a timber factory. Ben can't believe his eyes. They are finally saved. They have to hang on just a bit longer. Running to Alex, he wakes her up to show her the factory. Alex is too weak, but she's happy and determined to get to the factory. They continue walking with a new conviction. The dog goes missing again after a few hours and Alex tells Ben to go after him. He does, but he accidentally steps on a trap and hurts his leg badly. Alex goes after him and she tries to open the trap, but it's pointless. Ben needs a doctor immediately. He tells her to get help and she goes. She can barely walk, much less run, but eventually, she reaches the factory and finds some help. When Ben wakes next, he's in a hospital. Alex is nowhere to be seen. A nurse appears and he asks where she is. As soon as he knows, he goes after her. He has to see with his own eyes that she's fine. He finds her room and sees her through the door window. She waves him in and he quickly hugs her. He wants to stay glued to her for the rest of his life, that's the amount of relief he feels seeing her again. Alex is also glad that he's fine. They cry a bit in each other's arms and Ben almost kisses her before they hear a toilet flush. A man walks out of the bathroom. It's Mark. He doesn't look happy to see Ben there, and his greeting is rather cold. Ben feels awkward that he almost kissed her, led by their heightened emotions. Alex doesn't know what to do. After introducing each other, Ben tells them that he has to go back to his room and leaves the couple. Alex feels her heart clench watching him walk away. Ben is crushed. He knew that moment was going to come when they were rescued, but he didn't think it would be that hard. He had to say goodbye to another woman he loves and it's not fun. In his room, he takes a shower and cries alone. There's no one there to comfort him, and even if there was, he wouldn't want it. He wants Alex, but she's unavailable to him. Days go by and they go back to their lives. Alex tries to find her footing again after such a traumatic experience. She's always surrounded by people and Mark, but she has never felt more lonely. Mark tries his best with her, but he doesn't understand her. He has no idea what she's been through. Alex can't explain it to him. She has nightmares and she can't sleep on a bed because she got used to sleeping on the hard floor. Ben is in a similar situation. He goes back to London and adopts the dog. He can't work as a surgeon anymore because of frostbite on his fingers. He feels lonely and misses Alex a lot. She tries calling him, but he decided not to answer. He thinks she got married and she's living happily with Mark, and he doesn't want that pain in his life. He admitted to himself that he fell in love with her, and he has to move on. More time passes and Alex realizes that she doesn't love Mark anymore. Her experience changed her so much that she can't go back to the person she was before. Mark wants his Alex back, and she can't give it to him. They break up and go their separate ways. Alex develops the pictures she took on her trip and decides to send them to Ben. It's only after he sees them that he calls her back. They set a date to meet back in New York. Seeing each other again after so long is like taking a breath of fresh air. At first, they are awkward, but soon the ice breaks. They talk about their lives, and when he asks about the wedding, she explains that she broke up with Mark. She couldn't be with him anymore, not after falling in love with another man. She confesses to being unsure if their passion came from a hard moment in their lives or if it was genuine. She knew she loved him in the mountain, but she isn't sure they can have a relationship in the real world. Ben is surprised, and if he's being honest, he wants to try to be with her. Alex is afraid. When they leave, neither one of them get closure. Ben still loves her, but he understands that Alex is confused. She says goodbye to him and turns around before they end up kissing. Ben does the same. They start thinking about their time in the mountain, and how the love that came from adversity got them through a hard situation. Alex starts sobbing in the middle of the street and turns around to go back to Ben, who does the same. They meet up and hug, knowing that no matter what happens, they have each other's back. The deep love between them will get them through anything. 